data has now become a valuable commodity, and every organization is hoarding data like never before. But have you ever realized that data does not have value on its own, but it depends on how you use it within an organization? Yes? Yes. <laughs> With an exponential growth of data, if you want to make a business impact using that data, you need to make sure that data is not sitting there alone, but it is being used to accelerate business outcome. So the big question here is, how do we bring our data to life? Hello everyone, I am Jyotsna Karki and I'm a data engineer at Novo Nordisk, based in Denmark. I feel honored to represent Novo Nordisk at this AWS reInvent today. Let's begin our presentation by knowing who we are. Novo Nordisk is a leading global healthcare company founded in 1923 and headquartered in Denmark. We are over 48,000 employees across the world coming together to drive the chains to defeat diabetes and other serious chronic diseases like hemophilia, obesity, to name a few, in addition to rare blood and endocrine disorders. We are ambitious and we strive for excellence. So, how do we do that? Like many other companies, we are also running in our own digital transformation journey. And I'm here to tell you the story about data journey we had in our data management and analytics team. Let me tell you one thing. This team does not own the data, but we help other teams to manage their data and use machine learning, AI, and analytics on top of it to provide better patient outcomes. We are committed to bringing our data to life. Now, let's give a look at how our legacy system look like. Whether our data is stored on premise or in the cloud, we had our data stored in silos. Once the data volume kept increasing, what did we do? We added more, depending on the use cases like machine learning, AI, or simply a dashboard. We stored duplicate data in multiple places along with the data pipelines and business logic. Then, it became hard for us to have a single source of truth. As a result, it was inefficient to analyze data across these data silos. So, what now? We made our digital strategy to break down these data silos and gain a 360-degree view of our data in order to accelerate business outcome. It is then when we came with our first generation data lake two years ago. We called it Needle, Novo Nordisk Enterprise Data Lake. It is a centralized data lake with more than 2,000 users. It consists of 2.3 petabytes of data. It was purpose-built to support multiple data domains. You might be wondering, what is a data domain? Well, data domain in a Novo Nordisk is a business unit which either produces or consumes data from our data lake. It can have one or more AWS accounts, like this box in the diagram. We delegated the data ownership to these data domains using AWS S3 access points based on user persona like data engineers, data steward, data analyst, etc. It also comes with an integrated data warehouse, which is Amazon Redshift in this case. Being a healthcare company, we are GXP and GDPR compliant. If you are not aware or familiar with the word GXP, it stands for good practices, and, it, and X could uh, stand for production, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, etc. So this totally served our purpose. Our stakeholder was happy that they could ingest and consume the data from our data lake. But the story doesn't end here. Once again, with an ever-growing data volume and increased number of data producers and consumers, it became hard for central data team to manage these large-scale data management analytics requirements. Also, it came with its own challenges. We faced both design pattern and operational challenges. Because they are correlated, I'm gonna just talk about in a holistic view. Because our central data lake was built in one AWS account, we quickly hit the service limit on our resources. Since it was user-based access to the data set, it became difficult for us to manage these policy documents. Also, it required central data team to understand each data set from multiple consumers with varying data governance. Hence, uh, 
as it was also uh, built for a specific use case, we couldn't reuse this data across these data domains. Hence, we uh, stored this duplicate data in multiple pipeline accounts. And each of these pipeline uh, pipelines are required to be validated because we work in a controlled environment, being a healthcare company. So um, then we also realized that each data domain has their own data engineers and data analysts, and they really need not to rely on central data team to manage their data set. Then we created our architectural vision of data mesh architecture. Our data mesh architecture has four principles. This is really interesting, so follow me through. Our first principle, data as a product. This principle expects each data domain to own and share their data as a product in addition to uh, building application and maintaining digital products. Remember, each of these data domain is a producer of its own data set and consumer of another data set too. Now, they can be connected through an overarching mesh which helps each data domain for data discovery and governance. Hence, our second principle, distributed domain-driven architecture, which scales with increased number of data producer and consumers. But this was not enough. It raised a lot of concern around and got us thinking. For example, what kind of a platforms would we build in order to provide all these data product usability features? How do we enforce governance in a distributed fashion and avoid chaos and many others? But don't worry, we have our third principle, self-serve platform design. So the main purpose here is to empower data domain by hiding uh, high-level complexity behind simpler abstraction and removing friction from their journey to exchange this product as a unit of value. It also frees up data domain team to innovate with data, and that's exactly what we were looking for. It also made us easier to scale out um, data sharing because it supports distributed solutions that are interoperable. Hence, our fourth principle, federated computational governance. It is a data governance operation model that is based on federated decision making and accountability structure with the team that is made up of data domain, data platform, and subject, subject matter experts like legal, compliance, security, etc. It also creates an incentive and accountability which balances agility and autonomy of data domain while respecting to the global conformance, interoperability, and security of the mesh. Now, I would like to highlight that each of these principles complement each other and addresses new challenges that may arise from another. Now that we understood data product, let's give a look at how data product look like in real life scenario within Novo Nordisk. Here you go. So each data domain has their data product and the circle represents the data lake. Now, Using one, uh, one or more data product, we can create new analytical product, which can be shared with another data domain and create a new product out of it. Here are some of the examples, but not limited to. Please do not focus on the text. They are very specific to Novo Nordisk. Here, I would like to highlight that it is valid for multiple entities within Novo Nordisk, be it research and development, product supply chain, or sales and marketing. Using data mesh architecture, it helped us to re reuse data product and share within the organization. So this is our long-term vision, and we are aware that this will keep evolving. That's why we started our data mesh journey with minimal viable product, and we built our next generation data lake with the help of AWS professional services. We called it NET, Novo Nordisk Enterprise Data Hub. I love talking about this product. So our data hub is a distributed data lake, and it has a data marketplace where you can discover data and its metadata. We became wiser this time and used role-based access to the data set. It also comes with an integrated data sharing, which uses AWS lake formation. 
We lowered the bar for data engineers and provided pipeline blueprints, which they can use to quickly orchestrate their data pipeline and focus on business logic. Using our data pipeline blueprints, now data engineers can build their data pipeline within a day. Impressive, isn't it? Moreover, we provided the automated and distributed infrastructure across all these data domains. Once again, we are GXP and GDPR compliant. Out of many benefits that we got by adopting this next generation data lake, it also unlisted many capabilities for us. For example, it helped us to reuse data product across organization, build data lake house where you can plug in and plug out lake uh, warehouse with our data lake and ultimately adopting data mesh architecture. Are you guys eager to know more about this platform? Let's give a deep dive into the AWS services that we use on this platform. Together, we build this data mesh platform where data hub admins can create an environment for each data domain. We use AWS CDK, commonly known as infrastructure as a code, in order to bootstrap our business account. In our platform, uh, we, it supports user interface through uh, CloudFrom, partly Amazon Cognito for authentication, and Amazon Aurora to manage business rules and data relation across these data domains. Here on the right, you can see multiple data sources, data uh, AWS services that you can uh, we deploy in each business account. We also provided the pipeline blueprint where data engineers can um, plug in and plug out any AWS services by simply using our configuration file and focus on business logic. With no doubt, our data is stored on Amazon S3 where each data domain can manage the lifecycle and encryption policies. So now let's give a look at how data architecture look like inside each of these business account. This is our common data architecture and being a data engineer, this is definitely my favorite slide. So at the bottom, you can see multiple services and pipeline blueprints that we deploy in each account. In our next generation data lake, uh, for data sharing functionality across this data domain, it utilizes AWS lake formation um, that uh, in order to define granular um, data policies through a grant revoke permission model. Also at the top, you can see multiple steps that our data goes through. One thing I wanted to mention is whether it's a centralized or distributed data lake, this design pattern has always worked for us. So here, what can we see? In the sources, it can be anything like on-premise, so external, public, first party, you name it. Now, you, using multiple AWS services, you can uh, ingest this data into our data lake. For example, we used um, Amazon FSx uh, for Luster in order to run our large and complex simulation on HPC for protein foldings in research and development. We use AWS Data Sync in order to migrate our on-premise data to, to the cloud. Now, once data is ingested into our data lake, we can use multiple AWS services in order to transform our data. For example, we use AWS Glue in order to convert our large number of CSV files into Parquet in order to optimize query performance and curate the data based on business logic. Now, this curated data can be ingested back into the data lake. Uh, which is GXP compliant. It can also handle personal, finance critical, and strictly confidential data. And now here comes my favorite part. On the data, on the, uh, data load event of a raw data in a producer account, multiple consumer accounts are notified. And then we run AWS Athena query for data modeling and store only curated data in their own account. Now, this helps us that we need not to copy the raw data into multiple accounts and have a single source of truth. And also, this helped us to um, re resolve this data integrity issue that we previously had. Now, each data domain can serve this uh, data using Data Lake House, and this can be done using Athena, Redshift in AWS, and we also use other cloud provider services within Novo Nordisk. Ultimately, our 
end users who are data analysts or data scientists can use their preferred tools in order to analyze this data and generate business value. This showed us that data does not have value on its own, but it depends on how you use it within an organization. That's why it is utmost important for a data domain to mostly focus on it. Now that you learned all the technical details about our data lake, you might be wondering, did this really make a difference to our business? Of course it did. Let's give a look at the moment of realization by our senior director after using our data and analytics ecosystem. He says what he thought would take one year has happened in the matter of four days. Impressive, isn't it? Initially, he thought uh, it would take 12 months to load their uh, data into Data Lake, connect to an analytical platform, and derive analytical use case from idea to insights. So yes, here we have it. Our success stories span across multiple entities within Novo Nordisk. I would like to highlight a few of them here. In R&D, we are helping them to scale the number of research candidates and reduce the research lead time by leveraging in silico laboratories and identify high-risk groups. In manufacturing, we are helping them to reduce waste by increasing the quality and optimizing the process. In fact, in one of the projects, we help them to identify vials with defects effectively, count these vials efficiently, and reduce false reject by using machine learning models like deep neural networks. In uh, sales, we are helping team to improve commercial performance by using statistical analysis like market mix model and help business invest into the most promising uh, marketing channels. Similarly, in uh, distribution, we are helping them to uh, optimize the process to distribute our end product uh, uh, for a given, by using right means of uh, transport for a given area, uh, and ultimately reducing the waste and environmental impact. And this is how we are bringing our data to life. Thank you, everyone.